because I'm very naive, uh, uh, like I did with Illuminati. Uh, I was very naive and I signed up for it. Surely, a you can't be so naive that you think the actual Illuminati sent you an invite for a $700 fee and they're gonna give you 200 grand back in 24 hours. I mean, come on, people. So George Bush, who's just a member, by the way, he ain't even at the top, you get what I'm trying to say? Came down with the, with, with the Whitney family and all these people and wanted you to join their organization and they're gonna pay you 200 grand. If you only give them 750. Guys, guys, I feel really sad for him. I I'm gonna be really, really honest. I feel really sick for this man. Hello, America, FBI and CIA agents and fellow cult members. Welcome to Culture Club USA. I'm Durabo. And today's riddle is, when at first we practice to deceive, the heart becomes home for novel lies to breed. And when substance falls cursed to the material of greed, the shepherd follows paths where then deception will seed. Idle souls will soak in sorrow with no roads to lead because the devil is a horse that no farm can feed. Okay, on today's episode of Only Scams on Trial, we have an honest man with good intentions surrounded by a sea of online scammers, Instagram thoughts, international hustlers, and desperate single mothers. Shall we get into it? Let's go. I can fall in love with a woman in one day when I touch them. Um, I don't know why. Like I said, I've been hurt by women before. Um, <laughs> right off the bat, <laughs> right off the bat, we got, <laughs> oh my gosh. He can fall in love with a woman in one day, one day. For, uh, first of all, how do you fall in love with a woman in one day? How, do, how is that possible, okay? I mean, there are 365 days in a year. I mean, that means he can, he can literally fall in love with like 200 people. <laughs> in a year. I mean, that is not possible. You cannot fall. What is the definition of love? That's what I would be asking him right now. What is his definition of love? Are you talking about attraction? Because you can walk out and look at a woman and be attracted to her in an instant. Now that is not falling in love. <laughs> uh, this man's bank account is empty. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> oh God, I'm feeling for him already. All right, let's see. Before... We just get along everywhere. I mean, she loves the same kind of movies. She loves the music I like. She li she likes to cook. I like to cook. She likes to go out to bars and see bands. She likes to stay home and cuddle like I do. We just seem like we get along great. Well, first of all, you get along great because she's an online <laughs> bot. I mean, you, 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 these people never have conversations. Do you realize that? Somehow their phones are broken. They can't video chat. There's no such thing as Zoom or FaceTime anymore. Like everyone in like any kind of situation, especially somebody that's receiving money from somebody has a way to Skype, a way to, to go to the library and do it, okay? No, they got every excuse under the sun. Borrow your neighbor's phone. Get an iPhone from your neighbor. You, you understand what I'm saying? And the crazy thing is, is that 99.9% .9 of the time, okay? If somebody is in the United States, the person they're talking to, right, is claiming to also be in the United States. How are you literally in America with no phone? Okay, you're running around with Jordan sneakers, with yays, Yeezys, all this stuff, but you can't get an iPhone? I mean, hello, the man probably sent who knows how much money. You don't have a phone. There's no way to video chat. Red flag. What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to another episode of Scamfish, sponsored by SocialCatfish.com. I like her because her number one thing is her child. I told her I was willing to adopt her daughter, so she was my daughter. I just like the fact that she's a single mother and 
you know, she really cares a lot about her daughter. Okay, so we've got, hold on. <laughs> this man needs the red pill. He needs some kind of pill. I don't know what it is. I don't care if it's pink, blue, yellow, green. He needs help. <laughs> he's willing to adopt a child from a single mother that I guarantee you he's never met because that's why he's on here. And a daughter that he's never spoken to, never seen, never nothing. Like, you're, you're willing to adopt her? This is insanity. <laughs> By the way, I have to point this out. Take a look at how good these scam artists are, okay? Take a look at this. This is a very believable photo. Very believable. Look at this. The age is right. I want to make this work. I'm willing to even adopt your daughter. Can you imagine how much money he sent this one? I mean, what is this? Feed the children? This is We're not adopting some, you know, um, um, foster child from another country. You know what I mean? I mean, this, this woman is supposedly in the United States. I guarantee that. Now we know that whoever this is, is not. Oh, this guy needs help. It's like the fact that she's a single mother and, you know, she really cares a lot about her daughter. In today's episode, we speak to a man named Andrew who is in an online relationship with a woman named Shirley. The two met on Facebook and hit it off through messages and phone calls. Andrew has tried countlessly to meet this woman in person, yet something always gets in the way. Soon, baby, I promise. First of all, okay, when are we gonna meet in person? Soon, baby, soon, baby, soon. <laughs> okay, this is like, again, it's some dude, some kid, you know, getting like, because a watch. Watch, watch. I guarantee you the money is like gift cards, $100, $50. You know, let's see if she needs feminine hygiene products. It kills me. I can't tell you how many times I've... It, always feminine hygiene products. It's like, really? <laughs> but you're driving a Ferrari. <laughs> you're posting photos of yourself on Instagram, driving Ferraris, but you can't afford $5 tampons. <laughs> I mean, at some point, you know, you got to take responsibility for your actions here. And the other thing too is that these these social scam fish or whatever it is, what are you talking about? He's in a he's in a relationship. Today we're talking to Jonathan Andrew, uh, who's in an online relationship with Shirley. No, he's not in an online relationship. Okay, stop acquiescing to these people and allowing them to actually think they're in relationships. You're not helping. Andrew has tried countlessly to meet this woman in person, yet something always gets in the way. Let's see if we can verify her and help this guy out. Hello, my name is Andrew. My favorite thing to do is fly airplanes. I have a runway behind my house. I have five different planes I fly. My dog is pretty much my life. Uh, me and him do everything together. We go out for drives and uh, take him to all stores with me. Wow, this, this seems like a nice guy. I mean, first of all, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling sick for him right now. <laughs> I'm feeling sick for him. He's got planes and he likes to fly planes. I hope he still has them. <laughs> I hope he didn't pawn his planes to send this woman, you know, a, a ticket to uh, wherever because her mother's dying of some, you know, rare blood disease or, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There you go. There's my best friend. Yeah, he's a good boy. He love. He sits on his daddy's lap a lot. We go out and sit in the in the yard out there, and I wave at people driving by. And years ago, Andrew experienced a deeply challenging event during his wife's company party at the pool. It tragically resulted in him being confined to a wheelchair for life, which also led to his wife deciding to leave. Oh. Oh God, why? Now, now I wanna find whoever is, has scammed this man and literally destroyed them. How, you know, people from other countries that do this type of stuff, these Indian scammers, wherever, Nigeria, wherever they're from, right? They are heartless, heartless. Do you understand this? This man, First of all, when they said wife, it threw me off, okay? Because I'm expecting somebody that was never married, never had a girlfriend. He was married. He had an accident and is confined to a wheelchair and his wife left him. She's disgusting. She is disgusting. Oh, my God and him being confined to a wheelchair for life, which also led to his wife deciding to leave. She asked me if I'd go to her um, company picnic, which was at Kings Island. So we went to Kings Island. 
and that's where my legs started. I was in one of their pools and ripped my foot open on the bottom of their pool, and that's when I lost my leg. This woman, his his ex-wife or whatever, wife, ex, I don't know, what, whatever she is, okay, this disgusting human being, he lost his leg and it started at her company party? Her company party. And you left him like this? Disgusting. The cut that he got at the pool caused gangrene to spread from the bottom of Andrew's foot all the way up to his thigh. The doctors tried to save his limbs and performed several amputations, causing him to lose his entire leg. And then after that, cut me off. Didn't want nothing to do with me anymore because I lost my leg. She said, I'm not here to take care of you. You have to take care of yourself. I'm not here to take care of you. You have to take care of yourself. What kind of marriage is this? This this is why I'm te- I say to all these men, right? Leave the government out of your life. Because what do they do for you? What do they do for you? Is there a rule or a law in that government marriage that says, hey, if your husband or your wife has some kind of, you know, life-changing accident or experience, you, you, you know, you're not, you're not allowed to leave that you have to take care of them like you promised to at the altar, those vows that you took, you know, till death do us part in sickness and in health. Th- these things mean nothing anymore, okay? It's disgusting. I wish that they would have shown her face. So I haven't talked to my wife in over four and a half years now. I've been alone ever since. It's hard. It's hard being alone. Andrew created a Facebook account to meet women online. When he filled out his profile, he wanted to be as transparent as possible to ensure that he would be able to find someone compatible. Well, it even shows, I said, I'm handicapped, I'm fat, I lost my right leg. I have nothing to offer. I'm looking to chat only. I was only trying to tell the truth. I'm not gonna lie and say I've got another leg. You know, I'm gonna tell the truth. See how disgusting these people are? How awful. This poor guy is actually being completely honest and open about his situation, right? And his wife left him for dead, practically. He's all alone. All he has is his dog. And he's being honest in an online profile. This is why online dating can be so dangerous. And it's actually the only way people really meet people. You know, the days of like meeting people, you know, going out and all that stuff, those days are done, right? So it's like, how do you prevent this from actually happening, especially when you're in a situation like this poor guy? I mean, does he not have the right to talk to people online and 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 connect with people and have some kind of connection, especially in the situation he's in? I mean, think about it. It's is this shocking to you what happened to him? No, it's not. Truly was just a girl on Facebook that wanted to talk to me. She wanted to be friends, and of course, it's a, it's. Why is this always happening on Facebook? You notice that somebody needs to go and get Mark Zuckerberger and just write a blank check and start handing out money to all these people that this happens to. I'm serious, okay? Why is it always on Facebook? Does Facebook not have any way to like protect your money? Like d- how? It's always Facebook. Can you keep the Nigerians and the Indians off of it? You want to be friends, and of course, it's a, it's a lady. I want to be friends. And the first conversation I had with her was, how are you doing? What's your relationship? Are you with anybody? And she said, no. She said, I'm single. My boyfriend cheated on me and left me. I think she's very pretty. She's 41 years old. She's got brown hair. She's got a beautiful daughter. She's 12. She's kind of medium build. She's not fat. Look how realistic these photos are. Why would he not believe whoever he's talking to? Okay, this is extremely believable. Extremely believable. She's kind of medium build. She's not fat, but she's not thin. I think she dresses real well. I I just think she's a very pretty lady. I, I don't know what a pretty lady like her sees in me, but she calls me handsome. So I don't know. I don't know where I'm handsome, but <laughs> she loves to chat. 
We can chat all day long. I still do. She was. He is handsome because beauty comes from the inside first, okay? If you're ugly on the inside, you're ugly everywhere, okay? Look at how he has like the best attitude. <laughs> can you imagine? The man is in a wheelchair for life, okay? Due to an accident that happened to him at his wife's company party. She left him for dead and he still has a good attitude. I mean, seriously. And, and look what's happened to him. I mean, she wanted to talk about anything. Anything I told her, she wanted to talk about it. She was okay with me being handicapped. She said that she would love to take care of me. I'd love to help me out. Um, I have a video of her and her daughter singing. Now I know you belong to somebody new. But tonight you belong to me. Wow. You know what? These scammers are just going, they're, they're going to levels here. They saw those planes in the back of his house and, and whoever's doing this was like, Oh, we got a live one here. They're, they went all in. Can you imagine? They went all in. Wow. She asked me if I ever cheated on my wife and I said, no, never. When I'm with a lady, I respect the lady. That's what my parents brought me up to do. The first month of me and her chatting was great. Um, we talked about everything. We talked about sex. We talked about our relationship, going out, dating, where we're going to live, how I'm going to support her and stuff like that. We pretty much just talked about life. I mean, what we're going to do with each other. I like her because her number one thing is her child. Um, if she gets any money together, she spends it on her child. Do you see how these scammers profile Americans? Think about what I'm saying to you. Now, we, we already know. I guarantee you, whoever is scamming him is from another country. It's, it's very interesting to me how they can easily, so easily profile American men. How is that? Do you understand where I'm going with this? It's actually very, very, very scary. This is how other countries look at our males. Think about what I'm saying. It's deeper. It's deeper than this. Okay? Think about that. I just like the fact that she's a single mother and, you know, she really cares a lot about her daughter. What she wants for her daughter is a father figure. That's another reason why she wants to get with me for her daughter which I don't have a problem with that, no problem at all. And I fall in love really fast. Um, I've been hurt a lot in my life by women. She said that I love the way you talk to me, you're very polite, you treat me like a lady. We just get along everywhere. I mean, she loves the same kind of movies, she loves the music I like. She, li she likes to cook, I like to cook. She likes to go out to bars and see bands. She likes to stay home and cuddle like I do. Like I said, I, we just seemed like we get along great. She, uh, tell You're the alpha male. I mean, think about, you know, I, I want to point something else out too. You know, the, you know something? This really, this is, this is eye-opening actually. Because this is, this is a little bit unusual, you know what I'm saying? In a way, the situation he's in. But if you actually think about that, all, this, all these scams, right? These men are always trying to help a female. You notice that? What does that say about our men here? Think about it. It says that men in America in general have hearts. They're actually very caring and sympathetic. And actually, if you look around, you're, if you look around, right? Everything that we basically touch was pretty much created by a man. So they basically live their lives to take care of us women. Think about it. Meanwhile, you have an entire, you know, uh, multiple generations of women, right? 
which started back in like the 60s. You know what I'm saying? That all they do is is complain about men and disrespect men. Think about it. It's it's kind of, it's, it's, it's very interesting because if you would look at the actions of this man, th- he's pretty much a lot of men in America. Along great. She um, tells me that I'm the dominant male and I'm there to take care of her. She said, Really smart, really smart right there. You're talking to somebody that's confined to a wheelchair, okay? Whoever's talking to him right now knows exactly what they're doing. This is like psychology, isn't it? At the, okay? Alpha male, of course he wants to feel strong. He's in a wheelchair, he's handicapped. You tell him that, and what do you think? Yeah. You see where I'm going with that? She said, I will never boss you around. I will never tell you what to do. She said, that's the man's job. The man is there to take care of the family. So, I mean, she sounds like she wants to be a wife. We could talk for a couple hours a day. She'll text me and she'll say, I got to go. And then later on that day, she'll text me again. And then usually close to when I'm going to bed, she'll text me again. She's always asking me, are you eating? (laughs) What are you eating? She's very health conscious woman. She said that she's going to help me out when she gets up here with my health. I can fall in love with a woman in one day when I touch them. Um, I don't know why. Like I said, I've been hurt by women before. I touch them, they act like they like me, and then we're done. Andrew finally found this poor guy. This poor guy felt he found a companion. The two plan to eventually meet up in person and surely claim to be in North Carolina. Here we go, see what I'm saying? North Carolina, there we go, right in North Carolina. United States, okay, United States. Now, where is he really? And I know it's a man, okay? Because the, the, the men have patience, okay? Men have patience and they're calculated. Women have no patience and they're emotional. He's been talking to this person for a month. (laughs) Do you imagine the time that has to go in to do this? I mean, first of all, if you're going to meet people online, take the planes out of the picture, take your cars out, don't put your house up. (laughs) Just tell them you live in a homeless shelter. (laughs) See if they like you. You might got a chance. You know what I mean? But things began to get a little more complicated when she started to ask for money. The first time she asked for for money, she wanted me to get the cash app, which I did. I got cash app. She wanted a hundred and uh, hundred and forty more dollars because she was buying beads off of a lady to start her business. <laughs> this poor man. He, he, beads. She was buying beads off of a lady to start her own business. This person is definitely in Nigeria, <laughs> India, something. Okay, when is this? Some street fair? What are we? What are we in, in, in the in the bazaar? The food bazaar? The like street fair in 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 India or in China somewhere? I mean, what is this? A wet market? You're starting a business with beads? Okay, no, I'm sorry. Oh my God, he needs red pill. I told her. I said I don't know if I can come up with that kind of money because I live on disability, and she got all depressed with me and said i really really need that money you know she said put it on your cash app and send it to me every time you get money every single day every single week she asked me for money constantly i need the money to do my business i need this i need that and she just asked me today again if you get paid on monday can you send me 140 dollars it's just a non-stop with her. This is unbelievable. Now, okay, look, I understand he's disabled and all that. How do you not, you gotta, you gotta come to your senses at some point. Every Monday you get paid and she's like, I know you get paid on Monday. Please help me. Please help me. Come on. I mean, this, this is, you haven't even met this person. You, you haven't even seen them. You haven't even video chatted them. You're sending them $140 every time and you're on disability. Come on, men. Priorities, priorities, priorities. It's a non-stop with her. She'll change the subject for a little while and start talking about normal things, but then it will come up and say, can you send me this? Can you send me that? It just doesn't feel right that she wants money like all the time. 
it, it does take money out of my social security check. I usually run out of money, usually the third week in the month, and the rest of the, rest of the time I'm um, doing nothing because I have no money. I really like her a lot, and I want her to come up here. I want to be with her. I told her I was willing to adopt her daughter, so she was my daughter. She talks to me like my wife talked to me. I now that would have been a huge mistake. <laughs> that would have been a huge mistake, even if the, I mean, because here's the thing: you're gonna, you're adopting a daughter. What is he going to adopt the daughter to before he even meets her? This man is spending his social security. This is what makes me so angered with these scammers. They are heartless. I mean, nobody should be scammed, but come on. They always find the absolute weakest people at the weakest points in their life. And, and they end up literally with nothing with nothing. It's not like this is somebody that has, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars saved in the bank, his house is paid for, and, you know, he's got businesses, money coming in, and he's sending money. This is somebody who is lonely, depressed, handicapped, his wife left him for dead, who wants some kind of companion. This is wrong on so many levels. And I guarantee you nothing is going to happen to whoever this person is because they can never find them. I, I want her to get her business going, and I want uh, her daughter to have a good life. I told her, I said, I'll just jump in my van right now, and I'll come down and visit you. And she's like, well, I don't know if we can do that. Andrew is optimistic. But you're in the United States. You're in North Carolina. I mean, you're not, you're not, you know, are you in Russia? Where are you? Are you in Cayman Island? No, you're in the United States. That's the thing that kills me. How is it so difficult for people to meet somebody when you're in the United States? Get in your car and drive cross country. It's it's pretty simple. It's thinking about Shirley being who she claims to be. He is willing to do whatever it takes to meet this woman in person, even if it is sending more money. This relationship means a lot to me. I really want it to be real. I really want her to come up here and be with me. Actually, he doesn't. He, he, he you know what? This person is claiming to be like a few hours away from him, okay? You're talking about a few hours. Like, get in the car, go drive, okay? Think about that, right? People do that every weekend to go to the Hamptons, to go to, you know what I'm saying? It is not that deep. He knows this is not right. He knows he made a big mistake and he doesn't want to face it. That's what it is. Because a normal person, right, would literally just get in their car and go find them. <laughs> You get what I mean? That's how that works. Would like to have a lady in my life. Whether or not we become lovers, I don't know. I would be happy with best friends. Um, and I would still do a, everything with her. I would take her anywhere she wants. I really like her a lot. And she says she likes me a lot too. The next day, our team took some time to dig into the information that Andrew had on Shirley. After coming up with a game plan, we felt we had everything we needed to give him the truth. I got to hand it to these people. I will say this. They do find these scammers. <laughs> they find the location. They get the job done. I would, they acquiesce a little bit, but, you know, they get the job. Done. I'm not going to say they don't do their job. They know how to find these people. Everything we needed to give him the truth. Stick around until the end. We'll break down everything we found to Andrew. She's already told me that she wants to get a, a place for us and create a new family. And, and that sounds fantastic to me. That sounds like a serious problem. I want to buy a house for us so we can start a family. So hold on. Let's hope and pray that he didn't do that. <laughs> okay. You get what I'm saying? Because you want to buy a house, but you, you're asking for $140 every Monday. <laughs> every, time you, every time this man gets money, you need $140. You want to buy a house with what? Your good looks? <laughs> with, how you Buy a house how? What? <laughs> Is she like, really? Fantastic to me. So, Andrew, we looked at everything you sent over, and it doesn't look good. Okay. I mean, his simping is catching up with him now, okay? Your simping is catching up with you now. I mean, I feel bad for the guy. I really do. I think he has a good heart, but come on. You you, you can't be a simp. Can't be a simp. Simp for your woman. 
No, he's simping for <laughs> he falls in love in a, in a minute. <laughs> If you've made it this far, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, guys. We appreciate you so much. It was now time to sit down with Andrew and go over everything that we had found. You came to us to look into Shirley, and you wanted us to verify her identity. What exactly are you hoping to hear from us today? I want to know if she's real or not. I went through a miserable marriage with my wife, and I don't want to go through that again. She's already told me that she wants to get a, a place for us and create a new family. And, and that sounds fantastic to me. Now, first of all, gentlemen, if you have to call on a team of people to find out if your girlfriend is real, <laughs> uh, that might be a major red flag. You understand what I'm saying? You don't know if your girlfriend is real. How is this a girlfriend if you don't even know if she's real? It's amazing to me how, you know, people actually think that they can buy love. He thinks he can buy love. That's why he's sending her money. I've been alone for almost five years now. What I would like to have is a girl in my life to go out to dinner, go out and have a few drinks, go to movies, stuff like that. Romantically, depends on how we get together. You know what I mean? If we get along, maybe, but and, you know, until then, I really just want a friend. We were... That is so sad. That is so... I feel sick for him. You know, there's a lot of men that are just really lonely and it's very sad. And you know what? It's due to, it's due to these women these disgusting thoughts, okay? Women, you know, a lot of women are trash, okay? We're a little blown away by the lack of information that you have to, to back the fact that this woman could possibly be real. It left us wondering, have you ever been scammed in the past? Most of them want money. That's their number one thing, they want money. Okay, well, here we go. Okay, look, yeah, women are in a terrible place right now. But you're being a simp, okay? I understand all the things going on with this man, and I and I and I have empathy for him. But right now, I gotta give it to you. Are being a simp? Come on! You can't just make excuses for common sense. And and women that are out of control today are able to conduct themselves the way that they do because men allow it. Men like that get it. You're sending her money. You never even met her. You're calling on an agency to go find out if she's real. You already know she's not. Uh, they want a relationship, but they want me to come and take care of them and be their sugar daddy. And no matter how many times I tell them I don't have the money, they don't care. They keep just going on and going on and going on. But you do have the money. It's like the difference between when you're in real estate renting to somebody that just has a job or renting to the state. The state always going to pay you. <laughs> you get it? You 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 have a check that comes in every single month. <laughs> every week, every month, whatever. You get what I'm trying to say? Every month on that Monday you get paid. Okay, it's a perfect perfect scenario for a scammer. They know your pay schedule too. You get what I'm trying to say? It's not like you're going to get fired from your job. The money is always going to come. Just like the new one now, I've got the Illuminati. Have you ever heard of them? Well, they want me to join their organization, and it costs $700. <laughs> Guys, what just, what just happened right here? What? what? Okay, you know what? All right, you know what? Your your wife is trash because no matter what, but because you married this man. But there might be a little more to that story, okay? You, the Illuminati is calling. Have you ever heard of the Illuminati? The Illuminati is calling him. No, the Illuminati is messaging him probably on Facebook, okay, to join their organization. I mean, have you ever heard of them? They want $700 for the entry fee. I mean, why don't you go to your local golf club, all right? And, 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 and you know, you can even, I mean, you can, you can take your wheelchair through the golf course and get something done there and meet a bunch of people. 
the Illuminati. Okay, now, now you just lost me. Okay, now you got to, I'm going to have to spank him now. <laughs> That's a mess. Well, they want me to join their organization and it costs $700 to join, but I'm going to get $200,000 the next day. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Let me explain something to you. Anybody that, if the Illuminati called you and said they want $750 and you're going to get $200,000 the next day, send them my number, please, immediately. Because <laughs> whatever that is, I want it. <laughs> if I can give somebody $700 plus, let's make it a grand. <laughs> if I can give somebody a grand and in 24 hours receive $200, <laughs> I'm all in, okay? I got offered $10,000 by a lady in California, said she was a CEO of a company out there, and God told her that she had to help somebody that had no money. What would make this situation any different from any of those times? What would make this situation different is that you're dealing with somebody that's mentally ill now. <laughs> I mean, a, a lady called, how many, wow, I mean, you must be the luckiest man on earth. Th think about this. You must be, God has come down. You are the luckiest man on earth. You have like eight, an eight leaf clover. You've got a woman that called you on Facebook that said, I just, God came down and told me that I have to help someone with no money and it's you. Here's a million dollars, just $10,000. The Illuminati, okay, which is apparently, uh, you know, the deep state. Let's just go to Yale, all right? Let's just say, okay, you're, we're talking about George Bush, okay? The Illuminati, if it is, let's say it's the order, okay? We're talking about George Bush. So George Bush, who's just a member, by the way, he ain't even at the top. You get what I'm trying to say? Came down with the, with, with the Whitney family and all these people and wanted you to join their organization and they're going to pay you 200 grand if you only give them 750. Can you imagine? I mean, my God. I mean, who has to work in this country? I mean, you could just go join the Illuminati for 750, get 200 grand, go buy yourself a condo. I mean, what kind of mentality are we dealing with here? His wife left him now because he's mentally ill. Now, if these two right here don't call him out on this nonsense, I'm going to have to put them on trial. Every, you know, some, every time I w deal with this, I have to put these two on trial <laughs> because they're like, sir, we, the Illuminati called us too, but we didn't have the 750 at the time. We understand. Now, did you give the Illuminati that 750? Get, you get it? It's like, I would be like, what are you talking about? Come to reality. Okay. Wake up. Wake up! I just like the way Shirley talks to me. She actually sends me pictures where all these other people won't. Um, I don't know. I just like the way she talks to me. Shirley already calls me her husband. She says, "I." I I've heard this before. <laughs> This is this is the second time I've seen this. Oh, hubby. Oh, this. It's like, oh, she's already calling me her husband. Yeah, you've never seen her, though. How can somebody be your wife that you've never talked to? It, a conversation. I will never hurt you. I'm your wife. When she sends me videos, she sounds the same in every video. But that's the only thing that bothers me. Normally, when we work on cases, we receive several different pieces of information from the victim, like a passport, ID, website, or sometimes even a home address. But in Andrew's case, we didn't have much to work with. He had been giving money to Shirley, but all he had was photos and a link to her Facebook profile she used to communicate with him. He wanted to have a friendship so bad that he ignored asking for anything else. So we took all of the information that you sent over to us for Shirley and me and the research team here just dug into your case and we found some some interesting facts and also a bunch of red flags. I want to start out. You think they found a bunch of red flags? Yeah, uh, you think so? I mean, these are the people probably voting for the election too from Nigeria. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Somebody needs 
to like, Mark Zuckerberg needs to go eat a burger and go away. <laughs> All right. Like Facebook needs to disappear at this point. It's, it's literally dangerous. I want to start off with the online business. So Shirley stated that she worked for a company named Fashionista. That's correct? Yeah. Yeah. So what we did is we confirmed this company through business verification tools and using public record data. And we were able to verify that this is a, a legitimate company. However, when we looked into public records and the company directory, we could not find Shirley's name listed at all, anywhere. Okay, all right. My question is, is what did she tell you she did at Fashionista? She didn't say, she just said she works there. We took a- Now does she even seem like somebody working at a company called Fashionista? No, okay. People, you have to use common sense at some point, okay? <laughs> okay? The Illuminati, though, that takes the cake. <laughs> George Bush is coming down. He, he, actually, George Bush is landing on his runway right now. Hey, Andrew, I can't, are you joining the order or not? Come on down. You're the next contestants on the Illuminati is right for you. 750, that's all you need. We're going to give you 200 back. I mean, really? Look at Shirley's Facebook friends and Andrew, she had three different types of friends. Um, one being a man over the age of 60 years old. And then the second being a, a fake profile. There was many influencers that they pulled these photos from and created fake profiles, attached the photos to the Facebooks, and then created these fake names. Um, and the third profiles were people from West Africa. It's <laughs> oh God, you know what? It's interesting what they do. It's interesting. Can you imagine how, how this, do you see how far these scammers actually go? go? They, they got all the scams going, right? Because, you know, he's not the only one that this person's scamming. They've probably got like 20, 30 people that they're, can you imagine the money coming in? Can you imagine? Who knows what this, you understand what I'm saying here? But the way that they do that and they, they connect these dots, that's actually pretty impressive. It seemed like she had no legitimate friends or family or any real connections with anybody on her friends list too. Okay. We ran all of the images that you sent to us of Shirley through our reverse image search tools, and we were able to find her true identity. Okay. This is a woman by the name of Renee. She works for an online retail company. She is married and she does have a family. Okay. So Why do they always say, okay, okay? Okay, when is one of these guys that gets catfish like this gonna go, what? And just like go off. They never do. You notice that? They're just like, okay. The other one, gee, good to know. Good to know. Then he goes and does it with 12 other girls again. I mean, seriously, because they already know. You know the answer. You know the answer. I don't even believe in therapists. I've said this before. Some people just need therapy. Some people need help. They can't find their way out of this dark place. This is a dark place to be in. So every single photo that Shirley sent you is on this woman's profile. Here's a, just a few posts on her Instagram. Uh, these are her kids and her family, her dog, her grandmother, her mom. Everything is, is on this profile here. So what are you thinking? What's going on through your mind? I'm done. I'm a little upset, but I needed to find out the truth. Because I really was wanting her to move up here, but... I'll just have to get over it like I have to get over my ex-wife. You know, you mentioned that you felt like there was a possibility this could have been a scam all along. What do you feel has caused you to become so vulnerable to this relationship? Because I'm very naive, uh, uh, like I did with Illuminati. Uh, I was very naive and I signed up for it. Surely... A this man signed up for Illuminati. Guys, guys, 
I feel really sad for him. I- I'm going to be really, really honest. I feel really sick for this man. This is not right. Okay. And you know, this is, this, this is, this is, this is on a serious note here. Okay. There's a huge problem going on in the, in, in, in this world, in this country, especially. And it, and it basically comes down to females. Females, do you ever, do you go out anymore? Like I walk outside and it doesn't matter if you walk two feet or 200 yards. Okay. I can walk 13 miles, which I've done many, many, many times. Okay. You used to do it every single day, all the way through the park, back around, coming again. And all, even in Central Park, women with their children are doing this. It's all they do. It's all they do. This is why when you go into a store and you're like, hey, good morning. You know, the people like at the Dwayne Reed that, you know, I, I step into every now and then just to, you know, get cotton balls or whatever, or, you know, I actually know them and there are people that are actually kind and nice and have conversations. They know my name. They're like, hello, okay? But in general, right? You walk somewhere like into a, into like a Dunkin' Donuts. Can I help you? Yeah. Okay? There's no communication skills anymore. This is how we have men in situations like this. People are on dates and restaurants. I go to dinner with my family and you look around and it's shocking how many couples and families are sitting, eating dinner, spending good money on their phones, not even, not even interacting with each other. How, what, how did this become? We are literally, you want to talk about the mark of the beast? Any of you Catholics out there, right? Well, we've all taken it. This is crazy. This this is where we're at. Come on. These are human beings. Interact with people. Talk to people. Look around every now and then. Get off your phone. A couple times I figured she was a scammer because she would never call me. She would ask me for a video of me, so I'd send a video of me to her. Uh, but I never got anything in return. And I'm like, it took me a total of 30 seconds to do a video and send it to you. But yet you, it takes at least five to 10 minutes. So it, it was starting to prove to me that she was a scammer, but I, I didn't, I really wanted her to be real um, in, the, in my heart, but now, now my heart's broken. I just want, I just won't talk to you anymore online. I'm, I'm done. You know, we want to help you stay safe online. Should you choose to go back out there and, you know, try to meet people online? We want to. Sh- no, I'm, I'm going to delete TikTok and I'm, I've actually got 3000 followers on TikTok now. I, I actually, well, get this. I actually got one yesterday that, uh, said they were um, TikTok agents and they're giving out money to people on like random, you know, like they pick somebody. Guys, guys, this is actually, this is unbelievable to me. This is unbelievable. And here's, here's the sad thing. What is he supposed to do? How else is he going to meet anybody aside from online? Think about it. It's grotesque what these scams are and what they are doing to people like this. Let's face it. It's not just him. All of us. Everybody meets people online. I'm talking to you online right now. Think about what I'm saying. What are his options? To just rot alone? He's in a wheelchair, for God's sake. What is he? I mean, it's not like he can go out for a jog and go to the local park and sit down reading a book and hopefully, you know, interact with some people. He doesn't go to work. He's disabled. Where is he supposed to meet anybody? Like, we, how are we going to change this? Something has to change. People have become just numb. They're heartless. They have no souls. That's how we have a slew of OnlyFans prostitutes that are literally, they don't care. No embarrassment. How do you, how are you a prostitute on OnlyFans and you're going on the whatever podcast and bragging about it when you know your family is going to see it? Where are we? 
Andrew, it's a scam. Andrew. I know it is. I know it is. Guys, I feel so sick for this man. I feel so sick for anybody in a situation like this, okay? First of all, his wife should be ashamed of herself, okay? You made the choice to marry him, all right? You knew what it was then. And then you just desert him? We have to get back to morals and values, people. We have to get back to understanding that human beings have feelings. This is nuts. And we also have to get back to reality, okay? We also cannot just make excuses for ourselves because we're simps. You understand what I'm saying? You can't, you can't be so naive that you think the actual Illuminati sent you an invite for a $700 fee and they're going to give you 200 grand back in 24 hours. I mean, come on, people. Oh my God. All right. Lesson for today. Try and talk to someone you don't know and just say hi. Make eye contact when you go out. Be kind to someone today. Make someone like him feel good about themselves. Maybe he'll change. I'm Debrava. I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Only Scans on Trial. See you guys.